Okay, thank you, everybody. <coughs> Today, what I'll do is we'll just have a small discussion on the new principles that are emerging in the video world. So, very quickly, I'll take you through what the media consumption behavior has changed, and then, you know, what the new, uh, what in the old world has changed to the new world. And finally, I'll also leave behind with certain thoughts on the what are the watchouts that we need to do with regard to video uh, planning. So it is very clear, a lot of us spoke about it. Geo was launched around, I think, in the end of 2016. Ever since the launch of Geo, we have seen that the digital has grown so uh, significantly, and today it is the larger share of the ad acts, as uh, Sam was just uh, taking us through. What is more important is not just that the users that it has added, Actually, I think this is the first time anywhere uh, in our history we have seen where we are dominating the world. The now, uh, this is from the Nokia data, so it is basis the uh, data streaming that happens. We are the world's largest data consumers per person. So those who have subscriptions, we are the data, largest data subscription and we outbeat even the advanced economies like UK, South Korea. And in, by 2026, we will actually have one of the highest penetration too. Now what how come, how we are uh, consuming so much data, it's very clear that if you see the hours we spend on uh, video, actually roughly on an average, an Indian who is uh, having a mobile and which is a large percentage of our population, three hours we are spending on uh, we're watching video movies. That's what the data shows. The consequence of that is actually if you were to analyze the t average TVR or people using television over days, Actually, you see that across years, it has actually falling down, and the trend is very clear. The viewership is declining. Most of us do ask the question, you know, why is the viewership declining? And we have done some analysis which I would like to share with you. First is, viewership by definition is actually a composition of reach and the time spent. What we have observed is reach has been consistent. That's, you know, people have not moved away from uh, TV as much as, let's say, in US where cord cutting is a bigger scenario, but what has actually happened is time spent, especially by the younger audience and certain age groups, which I'll uh, detail it a little uh, further, they have actually come down. So here is an interesting chart, and this is what uh, most of us spoke uh, earlier to. Younger you are, actually you are strapped. Uh, what these bars indicate, let me tell you, the orange bar is the most relevant. Here, the orange bar is of the light viewer. That is, in bark, you can actually uh, trisect viewers into light, heavy, and medium. The orange bar represents the light viewership, and the numbers, the bar shows how much of time have they reduced from pre-COVID. So here you can see that the, average, the orange bar is the longest one. That tells us that light viewers have actually stopped viewing much of uh, the time spent has come down significantly. And younger they are, and if they are males, it has actually come down even further. Therefore, the overall viewership has come down. Primarily, the light viewers have become really light. <coughs> this is how we do. There's already a built-in analysis in Bark, and that's one of the advantages where you can see by viewership cohort. Now, what actually we as uh, TV advertisers, we forget, is when we say we are launching a campaign and we are delivering 540 GRPs on an overall basis, if you were to actually run an analysis, you would have not made, delivered any amount of communication to the light viewers because their time that they spend on TV has drastically come down. So the first thing that we need to understand is unless you get into and do a detailed deep dive of the deliveries that the TV is uh, delivering, you will actually be missing out on the light viewers. Now, that's a challenge. So the light viewers are Increasingly, the time spent is coming down, and how do we actually communicate back to them? The advantage that we have is digital video offers a very strong solution, and also it can add an incremental reach, because in digital, there is an option for you to actually go ahead and select only the light TV viewers. You might ask a question, how will the digital guy, he knows he is a light TV viewer? So, for example, if you take Google, they have various data signals, and triangulating those data signals across various hundred signals, they are able to identify who is the light viewer, and you can actually target the light viewer. If you were to do that, then your communication again comes back and you balance out the deliveries. Even then, the heavy viewer would have got a lot more communication, but that is fine because he would have anyway been subject to more ads. So the one point that I would like to leave behind is, in this age of uh, 
digital and TV, you need to use digital video if you were to ever, uh, if you want to balance out the deliveries between heavy medium and light viewers. So this is what I will just start with the first summary. So actually if you ask in uh, TV world, it is very easy to meet your objectives for medium and heavy viewers. But what we normally do is we go on pumping in more TV GRPs to actually trying to boost up for light viewers. Instead what we, sh we need to do is, once the uh, medium and heavy viewers GRPs are, uh, they are uh, we are able to reach them, then we need to move to light viewers. We can use the same, uh, we can stop the GRPs, move to light, uh, use digital video within the same money and actually give a combined reach and for which we have various tools. I mean, most agencies have their own tools. We have a well tried and tested called M Spectra, which is able to combine, give a combined reach and frequency across this code. This alone ensures two things. One, as an advertiser, you are reaching all the three viewership cohorts. Two, you are actually also saving a money because this actually ends up saving around 10% of your total budget. The next important question is how do we Outside of uh, heavy, medium, and light, how do we allocate money between TV and digital video? And that's a very common question. Actually, if you ask me, that's the most important question as an advertiser. I mean, a very famous investor once said, it doesn't matter if you want to get returns. It doesn't matter how much you invest, what you invest. How you invest and how you allocate between different budgets, I mean, different choices is the most important determinant. So as advertisers, if you want to get the highest return, we have to back the right medium. <coughs> we need to have a robust way to allocate monies between TV and digital uh, video. I mean, there have been various techniques. Some use regression, but regression is not the right way to do, especially in a dynamic environment. And if I made a mistake, you'll go ahead and keep repeating the mistake. The other one is you study the computation, in which case you are actually outsourcing the wisdom to computation. What we have come up is, we have come up with uh, what is called as a media consumption intensity. So let me explain what is a media consumption intensity. For a given TG and for a given market, we can actually, uh, we determine using various data sets, like I have listed BAC for TV, Comscore for digital, and IRS for print, we actually find out what is the reach that each medium gives within the TG and also the time spent, and that multiplication is actually the media consumption intensity. And I, uh, by and large, if you were to allocate your budgets in line with your consumption intensity, you are on, you are safe. But actually, we can even adjust it for, uh, you know, your communication task and the life stage of your brand. And that I'll just explain to you in the next few minutes. First thing we'll have to understand is, the younger you are, you consume more media. So, for instance, the silent generation, 33% of them, a silent generation like that, uh, say there are above 50 years they actually consume one media. Whereas the Gen Z, which is the youngest one, only one media is consumed by 12% of the people, and most of them actually consume two or three media. So, and India is a young country, so if we have to succeed, we need to use multimedia. <coughs> this is a very interesting slide. The blue line actually represents the TV, and across all age cohorts, TV is the number one medium. What is interesting is actually the black line, which is the internet, it's the older people, which is where we have labeled it as silent generation, the reach then actually exceeds. And as you go younger, the reach of internet dramatically goes up. And actually, if you see, more interesting is the time spent, and which is very dynamic. The uh, blue bars here, they represent the TV. Again, you can see they are shorter than the red bars, which represent the digital for the younger audience, which is Gen Z and millennials. And for Gen X, actually it's the reverse. So the younger uh, cohorts uh, are much into digital in terms of time spent, and the older ones are what are on TV. And this is something that we need to keep in mind. Now we did this for one of the home decor company. Across different TGs, we'll find out that the intensity of viewing, if you were to calculate and therefore get the ratio, it dramatically differs. And intuitively, what we believe is what the data also shows, for example, Mass TG is more inclined to uh, uh, TV, that's the last, uh, I mean, yeah, the mass uh, TG is actually uh, where TV outscores, uh, and in premium TG, actually, it's the digital, the ratio goes higher. Now, what we have also done is, after we find the consumption intensity, we try to upweight for TV, especially for if the target group is larger, and if you're doing a new message, and you might ask why, I mean, I took so much time to explain that the time spent on by younger 
on digital is higher, and now I'm sort of saying that we need to upgrade weight on TV, and I'll tell you why. First thing we need to understand is TV is bought on CPRPR, therefore it's a fixed cost basis, and digital is bought on CPM basis. So the digital, and if I were to equalize both of them and bring to the same thing on CPM basis, let's see how it goes. The blue line is a CPM, irrespective of the audience size, it actually stays the same for the digital CPM. For the TV, which is we are actually buying it on a CPRP or a fixed cost basis, the CPM drastically reduces as the audience size increases. Because you have paid the same money and you are reaching more people. And if your target group, target audience is much more, TV actually tends to be a lot more efficient. And actually, the other way to look at it is if your addressable target market is only 40 to 60 million, TV is not the right option to go because actually digital makes a much better job. More importantly, TV actually gives you a huge spillover. So I might be planning only for 20 to 40 females, but actually I end up reaching males and all, the, all others because TV is a broadcast media and there's a high amount of co-viewing. Let's see that, but digital, as we know, is a very precise media. Let's see a normal BPC product. And in most intuitively, most TV audience for beauty and personal care products are women. But actually, if you take the usage, it's roughly 50-50 between male and female. So if you were not using TV and for BPC, you were going only digital, there's a high chance that you would have missed 50% of the audience unless you were smart enough to redefine your target group, which is how we have to do, and that's something that I'll explain to you. Next important thing is, by and large, if you take India, the highly penetrated products, like for example, soaps, hair oil, or shampoos, their usage dispersion is almost close to the dispersion of the population. So the higher you go, actually, pray and spray works because you know there are very high chances your prayers will be answered because the dispersion of your users is very similar to the dispersion of the population. Whereas when you come to a nascent product or products which are not highly penetrated, what you will see is the user, there's a distinct skew, and this is just an example of NCCS, but you can see a distinct skew, whether it's in terms of geography or it will be in terms of <coughs> gender. So when you're actually dealing, and most of us do work on uh, nascent categories or a nascent brands, then it is much more advantageous to be on a selective media, and therefore you know you need to have a higher ratio, and that's one of the reasons why we are, are, are did that adjustment uh, factor. Now, after all, saying all this, how do we integrate the TV and uh, digital? So the first thing what we used to do probably 10, 15, or when I started my career 20 years back, more or less the media was very simple. It was not as simple as selecting only between DD and DD2, but it was a little bit more simpler. There used to be one big TV and you just go and bombard it, then the awareness would go up. That I think is no more true. Actually what you, you need to do to build brands is you have to build the top funnel metrics, but some of them actually come and get to be in what is called as the in-market audience. And we can specifically target the in-market audience, which was not possible in only TV world. And that's what the digital offers. And finally, from in-market, you can actually make them buy your product. So for example, in Nicotex, this is what we do. Nicotex, actually the smoker base in India is actually 22 or uh, lesser than percentage. But even then, a small drip feed of uh, TV GRPs actually builds the awareness. Then there is a life stage event, which is when most people try to give up their smoking is when they just get married or when they just become a parent. And we can actually target them with a different uh, communication. And then we can actually lead them to buy. And actually, behavioral targeting is something so, you know, studying the consumer, it, a lot of research is to be done in the past, you know, and many of them may be true or may not be true. Today, luckily, you have all of them at the click of the uh, button, and that's something that we need to use. When we use, we need to be a little uh, careful. We said we will be following different cohorts, and for different cohorts, we should be able to give the right message. And what normally most advertisers come and say is, I have only two or three communications. How do I ensure that I have the right message? But actually, if you see, most of the brands have a huge inventory of uh, creatives simply because they're very active in social media. Brand not active in social media is little, uh, not so common these days. So what we are saying here is TV still works best as a top funnel, but you please need to actually move into a full funnel planning. And in the 
for the uh, mid funnel you can actually do relevant targeting use uh, cohorts for identifying the right targets and then you can actually lead them to buy having said all the greatness of uh, you know targeting and that you need to use video let's also see what are the key watchouts that you need to do because a lot of advertisers especially advertisers of traditional uh, products they still do believe that video does not work as much as tv and uh, the challenge might be you know they may be not uh, uh, using the tv i mean using the digital video the right way because of certain biases that might have come from the tv and let's understand those two the first one is in a digital video we have two issues the first is there's no viewability standardization so in a tv it's much easier gap is a gap is a gap that's not true in a digital video second uh, tv has evolved over a period of time digital started its much of its life as a performance media so it is not natively it didn't start off as a brand building media so the metrics that you have are more towards performance media so the concepts like you know effective frequency are little not so well developed in digital but we they are getting there and i'll say that would dramatically improve them as a brand builders first thing let us get back to viewability what's a viewability we define viewability as coverage clutter and dwell time now in tv we don't need to ask uh, any question when our ad comes it covers the 100 percent of the uh, uh, screen whereas in a mobile that's not necessarily true half the time actually the ad will be coming as shown here it will be taking 50 percent or 60 percent of your screen second in a tv but for aston brands actually it is clutter free whereas in a video especially if you go through you know social media posts and a video just comes it's full of clutter your mind is actually not anywhere close to watching the tv but it is full of uh, that's what that's when the video is placed so it's actually in a clutter environment most important is actually the dwell time like i said digital since it has its bearings in the performance media and you know if you meet any performance marketer he will not like a very long copy which will be unlike a brand uh, uh, brand builder who would say you know long copies are best so actually the dwell time as per the standards set by mrc is only that it should be only two seconds two seconds actually make up a dwell time in uh, digital whereas in by definition a grp i mean a tvr is actually one minute because it's average minute audience therefore the dwell time is a huge difference and we need to correct for it second more complication is because the tv evolved from a performance media to brand media and some were ahead of the game actually viewability is not the same in digital media so between two platforms you can't say like one grp broadly in news versus one grp in uh, let's say GC is comparable, at least numerically. Here it is not even comparable even in a numerical and a definition point of view. So here, for example, there's a huge disparity between the largest uh, platforms. For example, a tree view, if you were to buy YouTube and within that, if your buy type is true view, then what is considered a view is if you have watched it for 30 seconds or for a duration of, uh, or the duration of the ad, in Facebook, actually, you know, if you're buying it on a CPM basis, even if it's a three-second in-stream feed, it will still be considered an, a view impression. And if you buy it through, uh, through play, it is 97%. So it's a lot more confusing. I mean, it's very, the Google made its name because it's such a nice interface and so simple, but when it comes to using it as an advertiser, it actually can become quite complex. So what we need to do as advertisers, especially if you're using digital for brand building, we need to set ourselves certain limitations and put certain standards for each brand and one standard that is a bare minimum obviously it can evolve uh, depending on uh, the stage that the each brand is we in brand building should co consider only completed views as a one view impression so you can buy it on whatever way you buy every platform will give you what is a completed view impressions and that's what we need to uh, compute whether you're when you while you're planning the total impression may not be the right metric that's, for example, in uh, skippable video in Google, even if you get one lakh impression, actually it will translate to 22, 25,000 only a completed view impression, and that's what builds the brand. In performance marketing, there's a huge value for the remaining 75,000 impressions also. You could have clicked the button and made some action. But if you're building it for brand, actually this is one metric that we need to do. Actually, more important is actually the concept of effective frequency. 
Now, TV over the last 50, 60 years, a lot of research did show that, you know, person needs to be exposed to a certain amount of frequency for the brand to get registered and the brand values to be inculcated and so on. But such a thing would never existed in digital media for a long. Here, various research, including our own research, shows that you need a lot more frequency to get the messaging across in digital media. You actually need very less frequency if you are just looking after, for example, a click. So if you go to an in-market audience and just expose him once, there's a high pro 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 prob probability that he'll be clicking an ad. And therefore, in much of digital, they started actually maximizing the reach because they were initially into performance marketing and therefore they were assuming that they will be building only for the in-market audience. But when we are using it as a brand building, we need to be very certain and a lot of research approved and including the Google's own studies. In digital, if 3 plus is roughly what builds a brand in TV, you need a lot more frequency in digital. But the way digital is bought, it's quite unfortunate. The reverse happens, especially, and that is why people do say that, you know, uh, digital has issues in building brands. The one plus in this particular example, and this is a live example, one plus is at around 87, but three plus actually sharply falls down to 22.5, though the average OTS is 3.54. If you were to do in TV and say, you know, I've got an average frequency of three, and I just got 20, people would be a little hesitant because that's not the way the frequency distribution happens. But in, this is what happens in digital. Now, the way to do change is people started using a lot of metrics. One, there used to be frequency capping. In frequency capping, it says that if there is an individual, you limit the number of frequency that he gets. But that is not actually building the frequency distribution. What then the, obviously, you know, brand building has become such a big thing in uh, digital. Today, you have an option of target frequency setting. Just like in TV, you can set a target frequency of five or six, or like I said, uh, generally digital frequency set at around seven or eight. You can set that, then the, DSP would actually go ahead and buy so that, you know, that frequency distribution is bought in. And that significantly enhances building the brand. So, for example, this is the 2-1 where we haven't bought it on a, uh, with setting the target frequency. And when you set the target frequency, the distribution becomes very healthy, much similar to TV. So, the key thing here is while we are using digital for video, of our building brands, especially digital video, we need to sort of understand ourselves that the evolution of the medium started as performance. It was not actually meant, TV had an advantage of starting off as a brand building medium. Digital, much of its growth and the initial days were because of performance. And therefore, you know, a lot of metrics have been there and there, there it is also continuously evolving and we need to be certain that we uh, evolve with the, how the medium is evolving and we use the right, uh, uh, levers to build our brands. So this is what I would like to uh, end, uh, give a summary. First thing is, yeah, TV historically has a proven uh, credibility that it has built brands, but increasingly younger audience are moving away from TV and so therefore a lot of them are light viewers. To supplement light viewers, you have no option. You cannot say I will rejig the channel mix and get the light viewer. We have done all sorts of experiments, that doesn't work. You need to use other medium and that's the uh, digital uh, video. Second thing is most important is to allocate TV and uh, uh, budgets towards TV and digital quite scientifically. There's a certain amount of bias with certain previous successes in TV. So some, the older the marketer is, he would say, I will want 100% on TV. And then if you speak to a new age uh, business who has seen a success in the digital world, he will say, let it be zero on TV and 100 on uh, digital. Both would be wrong and therefore we have a right way to actually evaluate depending on your, uh, both your brand life stage as well as how the audience consume. And that's the best way to allocate the money. Then the third is what I said, digital offers huge targetability but it doesn't uh, have the power of instant reach that TV brings in. So actually we need to mix both of it and that's where what we call as through the funnel planning which we have our own frameworks. Fourth is, like I said, it is very easy to say digital has not built brands, though it has built. But we need to ask ourselves, are we using it the right way? Because the evolution was uh, from performance to branding. Now that there are, every day there are new improvements and we need to have those catch-ups 
to ensure that we use digital the right way to build brands. That would be my four key takeouts uh, for today's session. Thank you.